Hey folks, it's Colin from Commerce Gurus back again with yet another WooCommerce speed and optimization tutorial. In this video, we're finally going to dive into our WooCommerce product description pages or PDPs. I know some of you have been waiting a little while for this video. Yes, it is August and we started this process back in May, but I promise you it'll be worth the wait. This is part four, uh, the final part in our WooCommerce speed and tutorial series. So if you've not watched parts one to three, I'd suggest taking a look at those at some point for lots of other WooCommerce speed and op optimization tips. Links will be down below. As we're building on the work we've done to date in parts one to three, our product pages are actually in pretty good shape already before we even do anything else with them. But PDPs tend to be one of the hardest things to optimize in WooCommerce, mainly because of these guys, mainly because of images. Um, your product gallery pages tend, or product PDPs tend to have a lot more images on them, primarily because of the galleries. And obviously galleries are incredibly important to e-commerce stores. So, yeah, there's been quite a few things that we've had to do um, to really get our pages right up to the optimal level of uh, where we want them to be in terms of uh, our, uh, this new page experience world in terms of what Google's looking for. And um, yeah, that's really why it's been so long for us to actually get this video produced. Uh, we did, we did, we're going to dive into it now and you're going to take a look and see what we've produced. Um, but that's been the main reason, folks, is just actually spending quite a bit of time looking at the mechanics of how the gallery works in WooCommerce and seeing how we could improve it. So let's dive in. So what are the big problems we have? What are they? What are the reasons that um, PDPs tend to be a little bit slower in WooCommerce? So um, I've got this page here right now, and you can see I've got what? We've got about six or seven images in our galleries. So it's, not, it's, not it's not essentially a very big gallery, um, but suffice to say, uh, this page currently, if I just show you over here, let's have a look and see where we're at just before we apply any optimizations to this page. So it's a, we're actually doing pretty good already, right? We're standing on the shoulders of past giants in terms of the work that we've done to date uh, in series one to three, and even some of the previous videos that we've done around Core Web Vitals. So we're hitting low 90s, pretty good. Now you'll see in our lab data, several greens and a few ambers, okay? So not, not perfect by any stretch of the means, certainly a bit of work to do, but not the worst either. Could certainly do a hell of a lot worse, folks. Um, here's one of my pet hates. I think I alluded to this in part three, but one of the things you'll see straight away with the core gallery is that WooCommerce applies an opacity, a fade in opacity transition on our images. And if you've been paying attention to our previous videos around performance, you'll have noticed one of the things we want happening very quickly on any page is getting our hero image loading as quick as possible. We don't need this transition at all. It's actually hurting us. And that's what's delaying, um, in some cases, the LTP, the largest contentful paint can be quite long. Even here, 2.5, even on a very well optimized page as it is, that's a little bit longer than I would hope for it to be. You really want this under, well under 2.5, a little bit too close to comfort there terms of what that is and that's just a, a kind of a daft historical decision that uh, was made with the default gallery so that's one big problem and then the other problems are kind of all related to images here you'll see some of the opportunities that we've been presented with all about images okay so you know we've got these property size image warnings we've got to defer off screen images they kind of go hand in hand and then we've got some other more issues related to images down here you can see WooCommerce in their infinite wisdom don't apply width and height attributes to images that was quite a common thing you would have seen quite a bit in the past uh, if I remember correctly, we're using uh, WooCommerce uses Flex Slider, which is a, a, a JavaScript a component they themselves actually took over and supported for the last few years, quite a few years now at this point. And it was quite common in the early days of responsive web design to not apply height and width attributes to images and let the browser do its thing. But in a, pay, a Google page experience world where we're trying to focus on uh, performance optimization, that's a really bad thing because it takes the browser then quite a bit of time to figure out the optimal height and width for, uh, that it should use to display images. So um, yeah, that's that's another issue that we have. And then, then you can see here, right? So the transfer size on the page is about 1.5 megs roughly. Again, it's not overly huge. It's not particularly massive page again, because we're using Shoptimizer, which is quite light and performant as it is. But you know, uh, we, we know uh, from past experience that those pages could be a lot lighter. And if I dive into 
um, our waterfall here in web page test. I've got some data here. Again, you can see in the film strip here, you can see the effect of that opacity even more obviously here, right? So the opacity actually starts in around the 1.5 second mark and it's taking all the way to 1.9 seconds before that uh, image is fully rendered. So that's a big problem for us. Yeah, and of course, don't forget, it's not uncommon to have a lot more images in your gallery than what we've got here. So all of these problems that we're seeing here around uh, property sizing images and deferring off screen images and no height with attributes increase exponentially the more images you have in your gallery. So that becomes a real problem, you know, if you've got a product where you might have 20 or 30 images. And maybe that's not, you know, too common, but we have seen it. Um, and it does become a much bigger problem the more images you have. So how do we fix these problems? What do we do? I hear you ask. Well, it wasn't easy. <laughs> uh, because of the way the core gallery is built, it proved basically impossible to eradicate many of those issues that we looked at uh, with just filters or custom hooks or little shortcuts that we sometimes find. So we bit the bullet and we built our very own replacement for the core gallery and here it is we've got it it's in beta it's called it's part of commerce kit so if you're an existing shoptimizer customer which you probably are let's be honest if you're watching this video uh, you will have already had commerce kit installed and once you upgrade to the latest version of shoptimizer and commerce kit you'll see this new product gallery option pop in as as mentioned here it's in beta but it's been very well tested so don't let the beta tag scare you off and by default, it won't be enabled. So you'll have to manually enable it, but very, very simple. So you'll see it in a few different places. You'll obviously, if you click on this here, you'll see the screen we just showed you. And it also appears here on your dashboard. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and enable it just to start us off. And you'll see in here, if I go straight in, uh, very, very simple. There's not a thousand and one options. In fact, there's only one option right now, which is to enable the light box. And we've kept it very, very simple to start with and kept an extreme focus on speed and performance. And, um, you know, it doesn't cover absolutely everything that the current gallery component uh, does, but it covers almost all of it. So you'll see this is the default gallery here at the moment um, where you've got the zoom and you've got... Um, if you click on this guy here, you get this with a further zoom. So um, you'll be familiar with that, obviously. If you if we switch back over now and look at the Commerce Kit product gallery, you can see here we've got our thumbnails, as we just seen a few minutes ago. And if we click them, you've got a full zoom and you've got the light box, obviously, to open it to begin with. So we don't have the inner zoom uh, that you'd be familiar with within WooCommerce. Uh, to be quite honest with you, we did a lot of research when we looked at started building this ourselves, and quite a lot of the major DTC brand site e-commerce stores today, they don't really do this kind of inner zoom. I know there's still quite a few that do, but a lot of the modern ones have uh, n have kind of abandoned it, really, to be quite honest with you, and have moved more towards, you know, we well, have got a zoom here, so we don't need a double zoom. And, um, you know, we're trying to focus on speed and performance. So as long as the customer has a way of zooming into the product, at least one way, I think, is enough, which they do, uh, if you can see. So we've combined the light box and the zoom functionality. But other than that's minor difference. Everything else from a... Um, uh, from a surface layer is very, very similar to the core gallery with the one big difference that it's been completely written from scratch from the ground up to be, uh, uh, I suppose, Google page experience compatible and optimized for uh, Google page speed insights and for performance and speed in general. So that's a big difference. Uh, and we did, folks, we did have to <laughs> spend quite a bit of time doing that to get it right. I mean, we looked at many different iterations of different JavaScript libraries to use. There's no jQuery used whatsoever uh, in in this new uh, gallery. We're using Swiper.js and PhotoSwipe, which are uh, battle-hardened, tried-and-tested JavaScript libraries that are um, uh, completely pure JavaScript-based. Uh, JavaScript so there's no jQuery dependencies here at all. Um, that does mean there is one other caveat in terms of using this. So if you depend on uh, using thumbnails at the school level, 
Um, they don't yet work with with uh, Commerce Kit Product Gallery simply because of of that uh, n- n- um, desire to remove the jQuery dependency. So in core uh, in the core gallery, that uses quite a bit of jQuery to to actually affect itself. So that's in our roadmap though to look at it in the future. We'll probably add it in. So for the time being, if you that's something you rely on heavily, I would suggest holding off using. Uh, commerce gate product gallery but if it's not something you use and you want to get derived the performance benefits that we're describing here get, take it for a spin it's ready to rock so um, what what is the net effect of uh, this new gallery in terms of performance so you can see so these were the kind of issues that we looked at before and we were hitting what 92 on mobile and by the way that was very 99 on desktop if we now take a look at the equivalence with uh, the, the new gallery loaded, you'll see and quite an immediate stark difference. So we've jumped from the already high 92 all the way up to 97. And you'll see now where we had a few ambers, they're now all green, right? So our lab data is looking really, really good. We're now comfortably under the 2.5 seconds with the LCP here, 2.2 seconds. Um, you'll see our blocking time is right down as well. So again, it was already pretty good at 110, but it's now right down to 40 milliseconds and our time to interactive has come down considerably again i think it was yeah 4.5 seconds and it's now down to 2.8 and the fcp as well which is down what from 1.9 and the speed index was four seconds they've both now dropped considerably and the other effect here you'll see how quick the uh the main um hero image the main gallery image is coming in um, there's no opacity. We got rid of that. The container doesn't do any CLS shift at all. You'll see we've kept the CLS, you know, almost non-existent. And all those uh, opportunities that we previously had are now gone. So the issues around, what did we have? We had some issues here around the property uh, sizing of images. They're now all properly sized. You'd be glad to hear there's no issues around off screen. And they all have height and width which they wouldn't have with core. So that's those warnings are now gone, which is fantastic. I mean, the only property size image warnings coming up here is for this one here, uh, which is, you know, is only a minor thing. And uh, there's a reason for that, which we can talk about again, some other point. Um, but yeah, so we've got an exceptionally fast uh, and big improvement. I mean, to be honest with you, it's going to be difficult in any world to beat this because in addition to um, in addition to the gallery are uh, uh, being difficult to optimize on our PDPs, we also make extensive use of Elementor for managing the content area. And you might remember from part three of our video where we did actually DQ all the Elementor um, CSS and JavaScript. That's not something we can do, obviously, in our PDPs because we're using Elementor, nor nor would we want to. So the fact that we're actually getting up to ninety seven with both. Elementor loaded and a full featured gallery is something that we're very, very proud of and we're very happy to have been able to accomplish. Um, and we're pretty certain that uh, right now, as of recording this, it's the only gallery component that's been built for a post Google page experience world with WooCommerce. So it'll make a huge difference to the speed and performance of your site. You can see here as well on our timeline, um, our film strip in web page test, You'll see that the uh, the the page is actually fully the image is fully rendered at 1.4 seconds. So if you remember back here, we can see where it took one point up to 1.9 seconds, so a full half second uh, quicker in terms of the rendering of our LTP, which is fantastic. And one other thing which I'm particularly proud of is this is our uh, this is with the core one right so this is the this is the before state of the page we were looking at 53 http requests and 1.4 megabytes just on the dock complete you can see that's now come down to 35 and a tiny 2.69 or 2.69 269 kilobytes which is extremely uh, small versus the, uh, the with the core. And you can see here's the big difference, right, in the waterfall. So the images that were being loaded by the core, um, the core gallery component, were all quite large, and it was loading them all, right? Whereas now, with our new Commerce Kit product gallery, you'll see it's actually only loading the first image um, in the gallery. It doesn't load any of their images at all. They're all lazy loaded and progressively loaded as and when they're needed by the browser and based on user interaction. And it just loads the thumbnails 
Uh, so it's basically just loading this image and these thumbnails here, and that's it. Whereas on the with the core one, it's loading each of these gallery images that you see, um, just loads them all. So again, you can see it's not, it wasn't, you know, and there's nothing particularly wrong with that. Quite conventional for when WooCommerce uh, built this component. But in a post page experience world, it's not really ideal. It's not required. And uh, as we've seen now with a bit of time and effort, we've been able to replace those. So, what else have we got to say about uh, this new component? Oh, yeah. So, to actually show you, yeah. So, again, it's just enable and disable the light box in here, from here. So, again, if you, you can make it even faster if you wish. If you don't need the light box at all, you can just disable that. And that will actually remove the light box effect as well um, from the page. And you can see then it won't load the photo swipe at all. And you'll just have your. Uh, gallery images and no photo swipe, no zoom. And again, quite a few modern stores do that now. Um, if you've got good high quality photography and you're loading and optimizing your images for each of the diff various different device types, nothing wrong with that at all. And your pages are going to be even faster. Uh, one less JavaScript dependency again. But, you know, for a lot of sites, you probably do want the zoom too. So it's completely up to you. It's there as an option if you wish to have it. And as, as a result of being able to remove uh, the core gallery, there's one other little snippet which I'm going to show you and which I'd also recommend that you can now add because uh, because you're no longer requiring uh, the main gallery components. You can now DQ um, the WooCommerce blocks. So uh, again, we're not making use of those. You'll see that in, in previous tutorials on part two or part three i can't remember which one now when we talked about the plps we did actually uh use asset cleanup to remove uh the woocommerce block styles well we can do the same here with the snippet actually we no longer need um we don't no longer need asset cleanup to do that i mean you can still use asset cleanup to do it but asset cleanup will not allow you to do it for all products in one go so hence the need for this snippet here where this snippet runs checks to see if it's on a product page and if it is to queue both of those so again you're just removing some additional css uh from the uh from the waterfall that's no not not needed if you are using some uh, woocommerce blocks somewhere on your pdp you won't want to do this it's a completely optional one to do and there'll be a link to a uh, github just for this in the uh in the description below um but i'd highly recommend uh, using this on your pdps as well so yes to recap i mean we're looking at a, probably about an over an 80 percent uh, reduction in the weight of the page alone, which is a big change uh, from the core gallery. And you're talking about, on average, depending, again, this is very much depend, your mileage is going to vary based on how many images that are in your gallery and the size of them and things like that. But you can see here for an already very well optimized uh, PDP page, the jump there was from 92 up to 97. And you can see we also got rid of quite a few ambers that were on this list and got the two, got the LCP right down to 2.2. So that was a big improvement. I would expect, to be honest with you, if you've got heavier images, bigger images, lots of them, I'd expect your, uh, your incremental, your marginal changes to be even more significant. You'll probably find you're probably coming from a much lower base than the 92, and you should be getting right up into the 90s with these changes. Um, so yeah, I'll be very, very uh, interested to see uh, how everyone gets on with using uh, the new Commerce Care product gallery and seeing how uh, how much faster it's making your pages. We do have a roadmap for what's coming. This is the first release. We said still in beta. Um, we will be adding some additional features to uh, the new, as you say, as I showed you, it's, uh, it's quite simple at the moment right now uh, in that we only have this one option. We don't tend to provide a million one options. I mean, it is very, it's going to be kept simple by design, but we probably will add a few things like vertical thumbnails is certainly in our roadmap. There probably will be some, I think I mentioned previously, adding in the compatibility with the uh, thumbnail at the school level, that's at the school level, that's something we'll definitely be looking at doing. And if there's any other um, official uh, WooCommerce extensions that you use for extending your gallery, let us know. We'll definitely be making them compatible with uh, the new Pro Commerce Care product gallery. Um, so by all means, we're, we're going to be uh, continuing to work on this. 
uh, going forward. So that's it for today. Um, looking forward to uh, seeing how you get on with this new particular new feature. Um, if you have any questions or queries, hit me up in the comments down below or shoot us a message on support. And yeah, look forward to talking to you next time with another tutorial.